Entrepreneurs entering the supplement industry are seen as either one and done, that means that they try their hand and fail, or they get by, but they make a lot of mistakes that eats into their profits and destroys their opportunity for growth. So today I wanna to share the product development process that I use with my clients to ensure that they have a viable product and to execute the steps in the right sequence to minimize problems. All right, let's go. If it's your first time here, I'm Brian and it's great to meet you. I've been in the supplement and food industries for about 17 years, if not more, helping companies grow their business by strategically navigating FDA and FTC requirements, and I wanna help you do the same. So before we get into the specific development process, I do wanna take a quick moment to go over what typically happens so that we can actually learn from it. And when it comes to R&D, the general process is that the entrepreneur has this light bulb moment, this aha moment for a product idea or a concept. And from that point on, it's just tunnel vision. They're focused on the product itself, the key attributes, the ingredients and the claims, as well as the branding. And from there, it's all about finding a contract manufacturer, you know, putting some money down and relying on that manufacturer for guidance. Then they create a website and go to market market with some kind of marketing campaign behind it, assuming that there's any money left in their wallet at that point. Chances are that the entrepreneur is essentially winging it and learning as they're going. While there's value in this approach, there's also a lot of low hanging fruit, if you will, of common mistakes that we can avoid by taking a more systematic approach. So let's try something different that's based on my 17 years of experience in the supplement space and having worked with my colleagues in R&D and marketing. All right, so the very first thing I want you to do is shop around for contract management. Manufacturers. I know you've got this great idea and that you're like itching to bring it to life, but before you invest too much time right now on branding, like website or the formula itself, it's important that you take a look at what manufacturers are even available to you and roughly how much they cost. You may quickly discover that there are many manufacturers available at a wide range of prices with a minimum order quantity that is reasonable for startups. Or you might have a product concept like a ready to drink product, for example, of which there are only a handful of manufacturers in all of North North America, and as a result, all the big companies, big brands have already secured that business. So their minimum order quantities are massive and they are not cheap. Knowing this could immediately terminate your product idea right then and there, but it's not a bad thing. You haven't invested a dime to the project and because of the very first step of the process, you haven't invested too much time either. Assuming you get past this step, the next step of the process is to determine the business case of your product concept. The goal here is to look at the dollars and see if you have a product that your target market will actually pay for and still deliver profits to you. What do the numbers look like? How much will you sell your product for? How does your MS RP compared to your competitors? Is there even a real market opportunity? And what kind of profit margins do you need to have? And speaking of profit margins, you'll want to factor in retail markup, transportation costs, retailer setup fees, testing costs, and promotional discounts. The goal here is to ensure that you have a healthy profit margin to absorb all of these expenses and still make money. And this exercise will also help determine if the pricing that's offered by a manufacturer is actually realistic for you or not. The next step in the process is to create a concept brief. At this stage of the game, it's all about diving into the specifics of your product idea or concept and determining if there's actually an opportunity here. This is where you're gonna identify your competition, your market, and also all the product attributes. These could be specific claims you wanna make, maybe there are certain callouts you wanna have, or maybe there's a very unique ingredient that you wanna capitalize on. Here, you're also gonna flesh out what your formula is gonna look like and what ingredients you want and the amounts in each serving. And it all lives in your product brief because it'll help us guide us into our next step, which is create the content that would live on the label. Here's where things start to get real and you don't need anything fancy. Just open up a blank Word document and create three sections, front panel, right panel, and left panel. And now it's time to actually fill it in and you'll want to include everything from a supplement facts panel to the claims and callouts in your project brief to the ingredient listing and storage conditions, warning statement, your FDA disclaimer. And I do realize that you won't have the most accurate supplement facts panel or ingredient list at this time because you don't have a formula finalized. Regardless, it'll still force you to see what your label looks like 
and it'll also help determine what is important to you and your consumers. Put it all on this Word document in the applicable panel and then get that label and your project brief reviewed for regulatory compliance. This is a key step and you'll notice here that we haven't talked to a manufacturer or spent money on hiring a designer to create our labels or we haven't wasted any money on R&D samples. This is all intentional. We want to make sure that your product at this early stage of development isn't going to run into any legal or regulatory issues. And we're also betting to see if there's any missing information on your label or major revisions you'll need to make on a label which could actually impact your product. A good example of this was when I was working with a client of mine who brought me her product that was already developed and samples were already made, price was already set, and when she showed me her label, it had the claim meal replacement. What is nutritionally expected in a single serving of this product to be considered a meal replacement? Common sense would dictate that there should be a specific caloric amount that we want to hit in a meal, plus any other favorable macronutrients like protein protein and carbs. And we also factor in like the micronutrients, you know, the vitamin D, the calcium and the potassium. And it was unfortunate because the client already invested a lot of money to date and didn't realize that she couldn't make this claim. And now she has to go back to the development drawing board and assess whether or not she wants to make some changes, start over, revise a label or something else. So this is where compliance review will be really helpful to preempt these types of situations. Now, assuming you get past the compliance review, what happens after this? Now you can really start shopping for a manufacturer. You've done a ton of work to date, and this is where you want to properly vet a supplier because you want a partner that can execute well and execute on time. And assuming you found a good one, now you can start working with the manufacturer's R&D team, getting product samples, locking your formula, and getting a supplement facts table, which brings us to our next step. And that is you want to start developing artwork. Now you can create artwork with your own designer or with the manufacturer and personally I'd prefer to work with my own designer but regardless it's important to get going on this as soon as possible even if you're still toying with the formula and the reason for this is that the label creation process can take a really long time and the other reason is that you'll want to make sure that your artwork is reviewed for compliance while your designer is working on it. And essentially this should be done in parallel, compliance review and artwork design. Because the last thing I want you to do is to spend more money, more time working with the designer, locking down the label, only to have someone like myself review it and find all these design elements that are in conflict with the regulations. And now you have to go back to your designer to fix things up, but this time you're up against a hard deadline for production. All right, we're almost there. The last thing you'll need to do is design the finished product product specifications. Your product needs to undergo testing before it's released into the market as per the regulations. Begs the question, what parameters are you going to test the product against? Well, enter the product specifications. This document will outline all the tests you need to do from microbial testing to pesticides, heavy metals, and potency, and you'll need to determine the pass-fill criteria and the test methods to be used. Now, this isn't an easy document to put together, and I know that your manufacturer should be able to put this together for you, but you'll still want to vet it and make sure it's of good quality and captures everything you need it to, and that means having an expert review it for compliance. Some manufacturers, in particular the not so good ones, will create a good looking spec, but unless you're well versed in understanding what it's saying, you won't realize that the manufacturer is actually skipping testing or not doing testing altogether. And I dive into this in more detail here. So if you're enjoying this video so far, please support it by hitting that like button and let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.